In the first part, through fire statistics and experiments, we came to an explanation of why temperature control of electrical unit parts is helpful to a human. We also gave examples of well-known appliances where thermal protection devices are installed necessarily. Let me also remind you that we have repeatedly talked about thermal protection before, including considering linear heat detectors as part of cable lines active protection. It is the turn of the same task for sockets. Contact temperature sensors from fire detectors are often found in such solutions. It is important that, according to the standard, they have a certain range of operation. Various models will fit with a fairly compact form. In our example, the case diameter is 3 mm, height is 8 mm. With such dimensions, the sensors are easily placed in most connecting devices. For example, as in the power socket in the photo, the sensor housings are insulated with a heat shrink through which we press socket holders against the metal surfaces. On the opposite side, we press against the housing and fix it with thermal paste. The following photo shows that the sensors will not interfere with the connection of the socket and the plug. Let's continue numbering the experiments of the first part and simplify the assembly. There will be a C16RCBO at the input. We will limit the maximum load to 4 kW for it. We connect it through a plug and auxiliary sockets. To simulate the remote location of the outlet, power supply will be carried out again through a 7.5 meter long cable. We intentionally form bad contacts between the pins and sockets of the connecting device, as well as between the cable conductors and the outlet clips. We do not tighten them. The temperature of the socket outlet is still observed using a tester that is connected to a thermocouple. Since some connections turned out to be hidden, next to the layout we will show a diagram for sensors. It is exactly the same as in many of our other clips and is implemented simply. Thermosensitive contacts are connected in parallel to the phase conductor. If the temperature is exceeded, it is sufficient for one of the sensors to trigger so that the ground fault current through its limiting resistor occurred. Reaction to these signals will be the RCBO disconnection. Now let's see the protection action live. Turn on the power. The temperature of the socket outlet is rising rapidly as in previous experiments. No sparking is also visible. Let's speed up the playback. We get the required reaction at 84 degrees. Next, the connecting parts cool down. We get additional information about the causes of triggering by the RCBO indicator. Yellow color means that there was a ground fault. It is clear that the way one can protect any number of sockets connected by a loop or in parallel. With this option, the increase in price will be comparable to the cost of curtains, which are now used in all models. Of course, each solution can be transformed many times, and I want to show a few more options. Firstly, different positions of the protection devices are immediately outlined, not necessarily in the panel. They can be positions next to the sockets or in the sockets. The temperature sensors of the outlets of several sockets, depending on the convenience of the connection, can then work through a common grounded resistor or each pair on its own. Next, it makes sense to look at suggestions for the use of other contact and non-contact temperature sensors. There are quite a few of them and I suggest paying attention to designs that allow you to reduce the disconnection time. In tests with household appliances and sockets, we observe a certain delay. The slowdown is associated with the slow heat exchange between the heated parts and the sensors. The following model allows you to directly attach the sensitive elements to the metal parts of the connector, which reduces the response time to heating.
The following model allows you to directly attach the sensitive elements to the metal parts of the connector, which reduces the response time to heating. It is convenient for placing sensors not only on the outlets of sockets, but also on the pins of plugs, adapters, extension cords, T's or on the terminals of splitters. Let's look at the details in the following sketch. The pins and the outline of the plug are shown here. The sensitive elements are bimetallic contacts. They are welded directly to the parts they control. Due to good thermal conductivity, bimetal is heated almost simultaneously with the heating of the pins. The mating parts of the contacts are connected via a resistor and a capacitor with a protective conductor. At an acceptable temperature, the contacts are open and do not interfere with the power supply in any way. The middle figure shows the situation when the phase conductor connection overheats. The corresponding overheating of the bimetallic contact leads to a short circuit to the ground through the current limiting RC circuit. The parts conducting the current are highlighted in red. Reaction to the short circuit will be disconnection of the protection device and termination of the power supply. The diagram on the right reflects the situation with overheating of the connection of the zero working conductor. To explain, it would be convenient to swap letters N and L. Heated contact is deformed, but it itself is not connected to the phase conductor. Therefore, it is used only for the mechanical drive of the lever in the form of a rocker arm. Through it, the lower contact of the second pair is set in motion, and it closes even in a cold state. The current to the ground reappears in the circuit of the phase conductor through the parts highlighted in red. There follows a conclusion that at any position of the plug in the socket, signal from the bimetallic sensors will always trigger protection. Disconnection time will be less than when using sensors isolated from sockets and pins. Let's move on. I foresee the most frequent question. I usually answered it in the comments, but now, without a reminder, I will show myself what to do if there is no protective conductor, for example in old city houses. The advice to carry out reconstruction does not suit anyone, so I will offer a radio channel solution. It is implemented with the previous set of basic components of the layout. The difference is that the circuit is two wire, but the socket with sensors is the same. There is a transmitter hidden under it. In reality, it can stand in a deep socket box or nearby. The radio signal receiver is connected to the RCBO. We will add circuits that indicate the values of resistors and models of radio components. More complete information is available in the text of the film. The diagrams also show that the sensor contacts through the resistor close the input of the transmitting device and the output relay of the receiver connects the resistor to the RCBO diagonal. Such a scheme is shown in other films multiple times. I will briefly repeat that the contact closure, for example, when the socket of the phase conductor overheats leads to the transmission of a radio signal. Receiver radio relay reacts to this signal by closing the resistor circuit. As a result, balance of RCBO currents is disturbed. It is triggered and power supply stops. We will test the assembly with the radio channel accurately as in the previous layouts. After turning on the power, we see a single sparking. Then the connections simply heat up. When stationary, they do not spark. The load is now about 4 kW and temperature excess quickly passes the permissible value. It takes some more time to warm up sensor shells. At 86 degrees protection is triggered, so there will be no fire. It remains to check the operability on the layout where the conductors are made of aluminum. To save time we will look at the recording of the final test from the middle. Here repeats familiar heating pattern of loose parts of the connections without sparking. While the transmitter and radio relay remain in a standby mode, all control contacts are open. 
the temperature of 76 degrees corresponds to the moment of closure. Meanwhile, power supply is interrupted and cooling begins. So I think it has been proven that temperature control protection effectively prevents destruction of the connector and fire. I also want to say about additional features that are often discussed in the comments. One of the topics concerns application in three-phase networks. It is obvious that the principle of control of all parts of multipole connectors will be exactly the same as for conventional plugs and sockets. Simply the number of sensors will increase and will be equal to the number of controlled connections. Naturally, these sensors must be synchronized directly or via a radio channel with a multipole differential current device. Another topic is related to alert and alarm. If such support is required, it is easiest to implement it with the help of auxiliary contacts. When triggered, they can initiate operation of any local means of alert, light and sound, as well as alarms for remote transmission of messages to the phone or to the control room. In any option, the most important advantage is that priority actions are automatically performed to prevent dangerous developments of events, and this is the main assistant to a human. Faulty connections and poorly assembled ones are heated, but even a serviceable outlet will be dangerous if it is overloaded. Temperature of the connection is much more reliable indicator than arc breakdown. Thus, temperature control will allow to organize universal protection against fire, the cause of which can be either a malfunction or a human error. No smart home should be smarter than its owner, a deep thought and at the same time a joke. Temperature control is clear to everyone, both children and the elderly. It is implemented in many ways, from touch testing to thermal imaging scanning. We use temperature sensors connected with differential protection. A simple and clear design with available components, I hope it is sufficient reason for the widespread use.